So, you might have noticed, AI is literally everywhere and taking over the universe. Well, yes, it can be yours, but now also with an AMD GPU? Look, AI quick set. Listen, what's got me so excited about this is that you, someone who is motivated to get out of bed and live life, you can be part of the new Digital Enlightenment reboot. AI can give you all the attention that you need. It can be a tremendous tool for reason, individualism, and to effectively scrutinize traditional institutions. It can pave the way toward a social revolution, almost certainly for the better. It is the Enlightenment rebooted. Now with cat pictures. AI-generated cat pictures, probably a little bit of the scientific and industrial revolution thrown into boot. Okay, a lot of the industrial and scientific revolution thrown into boot, especially the industrial revolution. Labor replacement? Hello! And it all starts here, with your modest GPU. Our humble ASRock Steel Legend 7900 GRE. You betcha, any AMD GPU, really. But I'm gonna show you how. The AI landscape is dominated by NVIDIA's CUDA ecosystem. Really though, without getting into the programming details, CUDA is just one way that AI can be implemented. It's, uh, it's actually an abstraction layer, and that's kind of the genius of how NVIDIA is doing their thing and maintaining their playground. But thanks to AMD's efforts, their Rockham libraries, that's their CUDA equivalent, gives you access to the same playgrounds. You see your ASRock 7900 GRE or your 7900 XTX or even a 7600 with 16 gigs of VRAM, empowered by the Rockham libraries, enables pretty much seamless setup and execution of AI applications. You can even get into programming yourself with Python and PyTorch. Even if you've not historically been a programmer, Python is pretty easy to pick up. And this opens up a world of possibilities, from audio generation to advanced image and language processing, large language models, your own AI chatbot. Please don't do an AI girlfriend. That's just, no, it's not, it's not, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't really, no, it's just, no. I want to show you some of the AI packages bundled in ASRock's AI quick set application. It's right in the box! They put it in the box! AI Quick Set! It's taken them a couple of go-arounds. They have AI Quick Set for Windows and Linux, but Linux has some more cool features. And the first in the toolkit is AudioCraft. Well, AudioGen and MusicGen, which is kind of an AudioCraft alternative. It breathes life into creating audio from text prompts, and it really makes you question the nature of reality when you can just tell a computer, hey, make something that sounds like someone angry typing on a typewriter. And through a statistical method, it will actually create the appearance that it understood what you were asking for and then synthesized something that sounds like what you're expecting to hear. That's a lot of fun. There's also an image manga translator It'll translate PDFs, so you can download the original manga in the original language and have AI do the translation. You don't have to pass around some weird bootleg copies of media. It's a bridge between cultures, making manga universally accessible by translating text within images across languages. Like, cool! Stable Diffusion is also ubiquitous. If you haven't heard of it, that's probably the technology behind most of the image generation you've seen on the web. There's a web GUI for it, too, called Automatic 1111 that is not super friendly to get working on AMD GPUs, but it's bundled here, and you've seen that I've covered that in other Stable Diffusion GUIs in other tutorials that I've done. And there's actually a lot of technical aspects we could talk about, about Automatic 11.11 specifically, and how to work with models in Stable Diffusion. Even learning how to craft a good prompt to get a good result has become an art form in and of itself. If you want to go down the rabbit hole on models and capabilities and all that, check out civit.ai. Browse this. It's mind-blowing. You can download these models and just run them in the web GUI here on your GPU and use them to generate images based on what you type. And this is just the beginning. Civit.ai is what is colloquially known as a model garden. Model gardens showcase the potential of various models, helping users visualize capabilities of the various models that you see on display there. And whether you're an artist or a developer or just some rando like me, Civit.ai, alongside your Stable Diffusion installation, is your canvas to explore the bounds of creativity. This can also be a source of controversy, because who created this? Is it based on what art? Did you get the artist's permission? Was the art out of copyright? Someone created a model because a particular artist's style is so iconic? Did the artist even know? Look, when we still fire from the gods, we always burn ourselves one way or the other. At least until we learn how to wield it a little bit better. We're definitely in the self-immolation phase of this. 
Now while there is a novelty in the image generation here, the utility of large language models cannot be overstated, and that's what's got me excited. AI Quickset, for their part, gets you started with Llama 2 and Ubaguba? I don't know, Uba Baguba? I don't know how to pronounce that. With a web GUI. When you're interacting with GPT-4, you're interacting with a large language model that's like 70 billion parameters plus. Running on your GPU, you're going to be doing a 10 to 20 billion parameter model. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But for coding assistance and figuring things out and just asking questions, it's really amazing. And Hugging Face should be on your radar as sort of the global default model garden for large language models. It's it's become the de facto global source. The models that are on Hugging Face are not necessarily open, but they are downloadable and able to run them locally. A lot of them come from Meta. Yeah, Facebook. Facebook is scared to death of a world where they're not relevant, and they've got a lot of good data that they can use to train AI. There's a lot of people upset because of or on behalf of artists whose stuff has gone into training. Uh, did you hear of Cambridge Analytica? Do you know what, what has gone into these large language models training? It's, trust me, we have all been sinned against. But Meta is not the AI company. That's OpenAI, and by extension, Hugging Face, and to an extent, Microsoft. The models that they have been training on your data are downloadable, at least. And some of these are more open than others. I mean, Hugging Face is a garden, so there's companies and individuals from all across the world. Training these models is like a $10 million operation, at least today. I'm sure that's going to come down. Uh, more, in some cases. And being able to run a 7 to 10 billion parameter model locally on a gaming GPU, that is game-changing. Pun intended. And like I said, you don't necessarily expect something as good as GPT-4 or what's coming after GPT-4, because those are many, many, many billion parameter models, well beyond what you can run locally on a single GPU, but you can get a lot done with good 7 to 10 billion parameter models. These uh, conversational agents, as they're sometimes called, uh, span the gamut. You can get all kinds of models trained for all kinds of things. Code Llama is my personal favorite. A, a, a well-tuned version of Code Llama, like people will take a model Code Llama from Hugging Face and tune it and do something interesting to it and then re-upload it or re-upload their modifications to it and then you can download and run that. And these run well enough that it will make you question your own preconceived notions of what reality is. Can intelligence be divorced from sentience or sapience? It sure seems like the answer is clearly yes, but you should experience that for yourself. And you can with the software. But understand the limitations imposed by your hardware. I mean, the difference between a 70 or 130 billion parameter model and a 7 billion parameter model is significant. But 16 or 20 or 24 gigs of VRAM on your GPU is really, really good. Shockingly good. And things are only going to get better here. And an ASRock 7900 GRE is immense. It's the right balance of performance and memory bandwidth and memory capacity. Okay, I would, you know, 20 or 24 gigs would be nice, but it's pretty good. Lastly, there's YOLO V8, and it's a CLI meaning command line interface thing. That's AI object detection uh, from images or video. But to really leverage it, it helps if you know a little bit of Python. It does, there is a, a, a GUI here, but this is pulled from a GitHub repository called Ultralytics, and you can run that. Now I mentioned that, uh, you know, Rockham versus CUDA, what about performance? How do these cards stack up in terms of overall performance? Well, understanding how these models operate is important to understand the performance aspect. At the core of these large language models lies the concept of tokens, which are essentially pieces of text that the model interprets and processes. Now, a token can be as small as a single word or even part of a word. The efficiency and speed at which a model operates are measured in tokens per second, and that is a benchmark that directly relates on how quickly a model can generate or analyze text. So when you give it a long wordy prompt and ask it something, how long is it going to take to analyze your thing? This metric is crucial for developers and researchers because it determines the practicality of using a specific GPU for AI tasks. And there is a bit of a race going on to figure out what sort of silicon you need in your computer in order to effectively leverage this. So the 7900 GRE 66 to 68 tokens per second for these large language models that's running in Olama with Rockham. Uh, the performance uh, positions it as a pretty strong contender in the realm of AI hardware. Now for this video I've talked a lot about ASRock GPUs, but what about AMD GPUs in general? I mean, isn't the magic here Rockham? Yeah, the, the reality is that you can run all of this natively 
on your AMD GPU. You just don't have an AI quick set installer to help you do that. But there is this AMD Rockham blog, which is the best place where they have really amazing blog posts showing Rockham's capabilities and new features and versions. And I'm working on some new content based on some of the blog posts here at uh, AMD's Rockham blog. But I'll give you a preview. A quick start for getting LLMs up and running on any AMD GPU, or any GPU really, Olama. This is a web GUI. There's a guide for it on the Level 1 forums. In fact, if you follow the guide I already did for Docker, NVIDIA, and Olama, it's exactly the same, except just leave out the CUDA parts. You don't need it on an AMD GPU. It's point-and-click, easy GUI. You're going to be able to download and run a ton of stuff. Code Llama, Mixtral, Dolphin, tons of stuff. Isn't this really just super exciting? If you remember all the stuff I said from this video, you can talk about this like you're somebody getting your feet wet with AI, which is really very exciting, and I can't wait, and oh my gosh, everything is on fire in a good way, in a Promethean way, right? I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, you can find me in the Level 1 forums, where you should definitely direct your questions and or ideas for future videos. Alright, I'm signing out, I'll see you there.